photography is dead, they say. I say, long live photography. So in today's video, we look at some of the threats facing photography and why the future of this great art is not as bleak as people think. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back. Before we get going today, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. The other day in a photography group, a question was posed asking, how do you keep your interest in photography going? Suggestions included things like changing genre, challenging yourself, striving to improve, or even relying on the positive feedback you get on social media. I don't think that last one is a good idea, but one interesting response came from a photographer who I've followed for many years now called James R. Burns. And he said simply, I don't have to do anything really, it's just there. That's a beautiful thing. Although I think James is lucky, that's certainly not how it works for me. I have to make a conscious effort to work hard at anything I do, but I believe this boils down to value. What value do you get from your photography? And there's two parts to this. What value do you get from doing photography? And what value do you get from viewing photos? Let's first consider viewing photos. Over the last few years, I've become less and less interested in viewing photos online. And the engagement our photos now get across social media would suggest I'm not the only one. The reason for this is a very simple result of supply and demand. If demand remains the same or static and the supply explodes exponentially, value falls. Spend a couple of minutes looking at photos online now and there's an almost shocking abundance of truly superb photography. It's overwhelming and can easily bring on bouts of artistic anxiety, feelings of inadequacy, and I don't really think our human brains are designed to consume that amount of content. This supply and demand dynamic has the same effect on the price of photography too, a particular problem for professional photographers. Technology is deflationary and over the past 20 years it's become cheaper and faster to make a photo to the point now where almost anyone can take a picture and share it with the whole world in a matter of seconds. If you want to make money from your photos, it's worth considering there is an increasing number of people going after an ever shrinking pie. Also, information which includes digital photos wants to be free and the price of digital content will always trend to zero. This is why over the past several years I've been promoting printing so much because it immediately introduces scarcity. We're going to talk about printing more a bit later on, uh, but there's something else that creates scarcity and that is you. What value do you get from doing photography. For me, it's always been about telling a good story and it's why I now uh, see no difference between making pictures and making videos. They're just a creative outlet that makes me feel good. More specifically, as a landscape photographer, I also get a huge amount of value and meaning from spending so much time in nature, having adventures, and if the rain ever stops, soaking up some rays to make some vitamin D. Go and check out James R. Burns' channel via the link below and you'll see someone who understands this perfectly. The point is we're now in a world where our digital photographs are basically worthless, but photography is not dead. I almost see my digital images like a traditional artist sees their paint. It's not worth much until they do something exciting with it and use it to tell a story. Photography is abundant, but you are scarce. You are your biggest asset. So we have to be brave to create the photos and work that truly represents us. Unfortunately for many, that is not easy to do. I've spoken several times before about the artistic anxiety many of us feel when creating our photographs. The same happens with my videos and it used to really bother me until I once heard Martin Scorsese say when making a film if you don't hate the first cut there's something wrong with you as a filmmaker. This always happens to me uh, but I find that if I work hard and persevere the final cut or the final image is usually something I'm proud of. Putting it out into the world then takes guts and I know a lot of you struggle with this. 
It's understandable too because the photography world is full of egos and personalities. Some of you might not know, but before becoming a full-time photographer, I was a police officer for 14 years with most of that time spent on the streets of London. And it's taught me a lot about fear. On one occasion, my mate and I were coming towards the end of our shift, driving back to the station when suddenly a request for urgent assistance came over the radio from one of my other mates who was being shot at. Rightly, most police in the UK are not armed. And normally, we would have had to wait for a firearms unit to assist, but we were just around the corner. Our mate sounded desperate, so we rushed to the scene to help. As I arrived, I saw two sets of gang members firing at each other down the street, and then looking more closely, saw my mate and another colleague caught in the crossfire but instead of ducking down for cover they were out in the open dragging terrified members of the public to safety behind some cars on seeing the arrival of us and several other police cars the gang members ran off still firing wildly i ran over to my friend worrying that he'd been hit but thankfully he was okay once things had calmed down one of the people he'd helped came over and thanked him and was very grateful for what he'd done they then asked him weren't you scared? And I'll never forget his answer as he replied, yeah, but I was just doing my job. More specifically, every time we ran the opposite way to everyone else towards the danger, we were doing more than just our job. We were doing our duty. And every time I found myself in a dangerous situation or a scary situation, that always armed me against the fear, plus knowing that my mates had my back. I talked about similar experiences in my book Illumination and unfortunately the physical copy of that is now sold out but the ebook is now available at a much reduced rate via the link down below. Part of the philosophy I developed during that time now leads me to continually try to create without fear and not worry about what anyone thinks of my work or about me. Myself and some other YouTube photographers have had our more than our fair share of hate over the years. And it's a problem more generally today in a world that has become very good at trying to make us not like each other. And you can always find what you're looking for. If you sit there and decide to be jealous, hateful, or cynical about everything that's going on, then you're gonna find that. And it will reinforce the systems that thrive on it and require your fear. But my experiences on the streets of London taught me this. Faced with a difficult or scary situation, we can choose to become negative and pessimistic, give in to the fear and spread it further. But there's an alternative, and that's to approach it with hope, with optimism, and to relentlessly seek joy and crack on anyway, even in the face of genuine fear and danger. And there's a word for that, it's called courage. And this becomes so much easier to do when you surround yourself with great and positive people where you raise each other up. Go out and make photos together. Go out and create together. Go out and have a laugh with friends and have each other's backs in the good times and the bad. For me, this provides a confidence to go out there and create something both genuine and meaningful. As a photographer, I also try to emulate some of my favorite artists, particularly musicians who take a miserable and sad experience and turn it into art at the same time as weaving through it a sense of hope. It's the minor fall and the major lift. I'll share my predictions for the future of photography in just a second, but as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you are a photographer, Running your own website is the best possible way to share your story with the world. And Squares with, with Squarespace, it's just so easy to do and get set up. And unlike social media, you control how your images are presented. You start by using one of their beautiful templates, tell them what you want, put some of your images and a bit of your text on there. And before you know it, you will have a unique and beautiful looking website. You don't need any technical knowledge either and it will dynamically adjust to look perfect on all types of screen, including a phone, which is super important today. You can start with a simple gallery, but as you grow, you can then upgrade your site to an online store where you can easily start selling things like books, prints, mugs, calendars, anything that takes your fancy. 
It also now has a member section if you want to run a subscription service and keep people coming back to your site time and time again. And in the unlikely event that you run into trouble, they have award-winning customer service. I've used Squarespace for many, many years and have never looked back. So go to the link down below or to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And then if you like what you've created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN, tell them I sent you there and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. One of the issues with optimism is it occasionally has to be tempered with a bit of a reality check and some truth. All my life, I've loved technology and used to get super excited about new and interesting products. The Canon 5D Mark II was revolutionary as it was a stills camera that also shot beautiful video. It seems silly now, but it was exciting. Like LED light bulbs, new ways to listen to music or early iterations of iPhones. The point was it made our life better, easier or more efficient. And I'm not sure some of the new technology we see today does that anymore. One example of this is the Apple Vision Pro that I tweeted about at the start of the year when pre-orders began saying three and a half grand was a lot of money to look like an absolute bellend when you could achieve the same effect seen here in a blizzard for just 15 pounds. Then reports emerged last week claiming Apple were cutting production due to low demand. Personally, I find this quite hopeful. I've thought for some time now that tech companies have woefully underestimated our desire to remain firmly connected to reality. It's part of our basic human nature. We feel good when we go outside, hike in the hills, create things and spend time with friends. I've always liked playing computer games and the immersive games of today are very impressive, but I can still turn my face away from the screen and reality is right there. When AI hit the news absolutely everywhere, I was initially very concerned about it because it would drive the supply and demand for pictures into an even worse place and basically kill photography. However, I've now changed my opinion for two very important reasons. Firstly, it seems like we will always prefer the human story, the photograph made by the real person having a real experience, showing real things that happened. I suspect eventually that AI will be able to generate a catchy song, a convincing movie script, and a very photorealistic landscape from scratch. But for me, and I suspect for many others, the second I find out that is AI generated, I will completely lose interest. It's the human stories and connections I'm seeking. Having said that, I actually find the AI features of Lightroom, which is not really a proper AI, now saves me a lot of time. Secondly, and more importantly though, AI is not going to do all the things we fear until we find a new source of high density energy, which is not looking likely any time soon. Overall, I feel very hopeful and optimistic about the future of photography, but there is no denying currently it's clearly in decline but eventually it will find a baseline and that line will be sustained by us, photographers with an unending passion and love for this art form and the people involved in it. On the professional side, I don't think events photography is going away anytime soon. Things like uh, sports, weddings, any event that needs a person actually there telling the story of the day. For creative and fine art photography, I really believe the future lies in bringing our photos out of the digital world, where they are worthless, into the physical world, where they could potentially change someone's life. I've never been more interested in looking at physical photography in the real world. Printing photos at home is an absolute game changer. I've got an ever expanding shelf of photo books that brings me a lot of joy that I've purchased after feeling a connection towards the artist who made it. I want to visit more photo exhibitions, put one on myself then attend photography conferences that act like an inspiring and vibrant creative hub. And that's the joy of being optimistic. I could well be wrong, but I really don't care. I will face the future, whatever that may bring, without fear and continue to spread my hopeful case for 
photography. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below and then click here if you want to be inspired to start printing or click here to have a good laugh with Mally and I out on the hill. See you next time.